Hey guys, in this video, we will go through the step-by-step -step process of installing an SAP trial system, which is an ABAP platform 1909 support pack 1 version on a Docker container. Once installed, this trial system can be used to develop ABAP programs and you can also execute basis transactions to get some understanding of the SAP system administration process. If you are new here, my name is Arun and I make videos about the SAP topics. Please subscribe to the channel to keep updated with the SAP ecosystem. The agenda is as follows. We will start with launching a virtual machine on Amazon AWS. You can launch a virtual machine on any cloud provider. And if you've got a powerful laptop or desktop, then you can use that as well. Then we will install Docker on the virtual machine and pull the SAP trial system Docker image from the Docker hub into the virtual machine. Then run the Docker container, which will start the SAP application. Then we will see how to connect to the SAP system from your laptop, your SAP GUI and browser. Please watch the full video to learn the complete process. As a first step, I'm going to launch an AWS EC2 instance from the management console. Click launch instance. I will name this instance as SAP on Docker, but you can name it whatever you want. I'm choosing Ubuntu as the operating system for this virtual machine, as it will be cheaper to run and also easy to operate. After choosing the operating system, I'm going to choose the instance. I'm choosing the one with 16 virtual CPUs and 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is the minimum system requirement for this SAP trial system. Once you have chosen the instance, you need to create a key pair which is going to be used to log into the EC2 virtual machine remotely from your laptop. I'm going to name this as SAP on Docker Linux and then click create key pair button. It will download the key pair file with a .pem file extension. Save it safely somewhere for now and I will show you how to use it later. Then in the network settings, you need to open ports of the server so that you can communicate with the server from the outside world. I need to log into the virtual machine via the SSH connection. So I'm going to allow access to the SSH port 22 specifically from my laptop's IP address. I'm also going to allow access to all the TCP ports from my laptop as it will be required for SAP GUI connection. You could also just allow port 3200 for SAP GUI connection if you want to restrict the access to just one specific port. Then we need to configure the storage volume. I'm going to add 250 gigabytes of storage. That's the minimum requirement. Then give it a quick check and once you're happy with everything, click the launch instance button and it will launch the virtual machine. The instance has been created and when you click on the instance name, you'll be able to see the details of your instance such as public IP, private IP and other details. You can connect to the instance you just created using different methods. I'm going to use my max terminal, which is an SSH connection. I'm just going to copy the command and open the terminal application on my Mac. I will increase the font so that you can see better. And before using the command, I need to move the secure key pair, which we downloaded before, into the .ssh folder. So I'm just moving the file, which is located in the downloads folder by using the command move into the .ssh folder, which is available in the home directory. And then I'm going to paste the command that I just copied from the Amazon management console, which is going to be used to log into my system. Before hitting enter, I'm just going to change the path of the key pair file location. It is complaining that the key pair file is not secure. So I'm going to change the permission to 400. Then execute the same command. As you can see, now I'm connected to my instance. Now we are going to install the Docker, but before installing any new software, it's good practice to update the package list. You can do that by executing the command sudo apt update. Once the packages are updated, 
and we can install the docker dependencies by using the following command. I have listed all these commands in my blog. Please find the link in the description. Once that is done, we need to add the docker gpg key and then set up the stable docker repository and finally install the docker engine. Once it is installed, you can verify the installation by checking the docker version using the command sudo docker hyphen hyphen version and it will provide the docker version details that was just installed. In summary, so far we have launched a Linux instance on Amazon AWS. Then we connected to that instance via the terminal using an SSH connection, installed the prerequisites and installed the docker on that instance. Now let's go to the SAP trial image page on the Docker Hub where SAP has provided some information about this trial system. It contains information like system requirements uh, and also includes commands on how to run this Docker image etc. We need to first pull the Docker image using a command. To use the latest command, always go to the tags section and use the command from there. I have copied the command that must be used to pull the image from the Docker Hub and going back to the terminal to execute it. Always make sure to use the command sudo before executing these commands as that will provide the admin authorizations. Anyway, as you can see, now it is pulling the image from the hub. It is about 20 gigabytes and after extraction, it will become about 50 gigabytes. Now we need to run the container image. So I'm going to copy the command that is provided by SAP to run the container image and paste it on the terminal. Make sure the command contains skip limits check at the end, otherwise it won't let you to run the image. And as you can see, we are allowing a bunch of ports to be allowed between the Docker container and the Docker host so that we can communicate to the SAP system from outside the virtual machine. Hit enter and it will run the image and also starts the SAP system and the HANA database. It may take a while to start the HANA database as it has to extract the data and occupy it in the memory. Then the application server will start. Once all the components are started, you will see the message all services has been started. Now moving on to the next section, you can connect to this SAP system using two ways. One is through SAP GUI and the other one is through your browser. I have installed SAP GUI for Java on my machine as it is a Mac. If you are using Windows, then you can use SAP GUI for Windows. You need to download the SAP GUI application from the SAP support portal, which will require an S user ID. If you do not have an S user ID to download SAP GUI software, then you can use your browser to log into this SAP trial system. Stick to the video and I will show you how. Now I have installed SAP GUI for Java and going to the advanced section, then providing the connection details. As you can see, I have provided the IP address and port 3200 on which the communication will take place. Then double click on the connection and as you can see, I can reach the SAP system. Going back to the website, SAP has provided the username and password uh, you can use to log into the system. The username is developer and the password is something you can see on the screen. The client is 001. Once you've entered all the information, hit enter and uh, you'll be able to log into the SAP system. Once logged in as a first step, you need to apply a valid license. In the blog, SAP has mentioned to use the website called Mini SAP from which you can download the license for this trial system. I've just gone to the Google and searched Mini SAP and you can see the uh, website. Just gone into the website and download the license for the system called A4H as that is what the SAP trial system is called. provide your details and copy the hardware key from the trial system. You can do that by going into the transaction S license. So once you have copied the hardware key, go back to the website and click generate. Which will generate the license for this SAP trial system.
Now go back to the yes license transaction and apply the newly generated license. It is all set and you can continue to use the SAP system now. Just check if the system is working fine by going through a couple of transactions. I've used SE01 and DB02 just to perform the basic checks. Now let us see how to access the system via browser. In order to access it via the browser, you need to activate some services from the SICF transaction. So go to the SICF transaction and I'm activating a few services like UI5, WebDIN Pro and HTTP services. Once that is all activated, go to your browser and use the URL as follows. It should contain the public DNS URL of your instance name, then followed by the port number for HTTP, which is 50,000, then followed by SAP, BC, GUI, and Web GUI with the client information of 001. Hit enter and you will see the logon page of the SAP system. Once again, use the username and password provided by SAP and you will be able to log into the SAP system via the browser. If you want to use any transaction, then go to more and select GUI actions and settings and then click settings and select show ok code field and save then you will see the field where you can enter SAP transactions that you want to use we have now come to the end of the video just to recap we first launched a Linux EC2 instance on Amazon AWS then connected to that instance via the terminal and installed the prerequisite software in the docker engine then pulled the SAP trial system image from the Docker Hub using the command that was provided by SAP. Then we started the image which subsequently started the SAP application along with the HANA database. And once it was started, we saw how to connect to that SAP trial system via SAP GUI and also via the browser. I have also provided the step-by-step -step instructions on my blog. The link is in the description. If you watched this far and if you like the video, please give it a like, subscribe and share it with your friends who might also benefit. If you have any questions, please post it on the comment section. See you soon in the next video.